Jehovah has always proved to be with his people in early times of cleansing and refining. And on this day, Brother C.W. Barber from the Brooklyn Bethel, a member of the governing body, will be discussing some points with some other brothers. And we want to mention that Brother Barber became a dedicated servant of Jehovah in 1921. Now, Brother Barber. Over 100 years ago, Jehovah's Spirit revealed to various sincere Bible students that the religious teachings of Christ's were false. They responded by getting out of Babylon. And then Jehovah prepared them for his use in restoring the long hidden truths of his word. One of these Bible researchers was a young Pittsburgh man named Charles T. Russell. He had almost lost faith in God because of the prevailing religious confusion. But he made a strong recovery and then took the lead in that work of restoring the Bible truths. So many others supported the movement that by the year 1884, it became necessary to form Zion's Watchtower Tract Society, which became an international organization, and later worldwide as Jehovah richly blessed the efforts of these faithful men. By a careful study of God's word, they learned that the Gentile times of world domination was foretold to us in 1914. That was also the year when Jehovah placed his beloved son as king upon Mount Zion. Satan was cast out of heaven, and World War I broke out in all its fury. As world conditions grew steadily worse, some came to the conclusion that the distress of nations would lead right on in, into the final war of Armageddon. Much uncertainty prevailed, and to add to all the other problems, Brother Russell passed away in 1916. He was succeeded as president, that is, of the Watchtower Society, by Brother J. F. Rutherford, who immediately moved to increase the public preaching activity. Fearful ones within the organization opposed those bold measures and influenced others to hold back also. Many believe that the early work of the United Ones was finished and that by 1918 they would all be taken to heaven. This did not transpire as expected, but Satan did strike right at the foundations of the society. Eight of the directing officers were wrongfully imprisoned, and during the year 1918, the public preaching work came to a halt. How the enemies of the truth rejoiced but their joy did not last long because Jehovah had a far grander program in view for the future. However, in order to share in that special work, it would be necessary for his anointed witnesses to be spiritually cleansed and refined. Now if you turn to your Bibles, Matthew 3, or rather Malachi, Malachi 3, 1 to 3, describes this uh, cleansing. It reads in part, Look, I am sending my messenger, and he must clear the way before me. And suddenly there will come to his temple the true Lord, the messenger of the covenant. Look, he will certainly come. Jehovah Harkins has said. 
but who will be putting up for the day of his coming? And who will be standing when he appears? For he will be like the fire of the refiners and the lie of the laundrymen. And he must cleanse the sons of Levi. And they will certainly become to Jehovah the people presenting a gift offering in righteousness. This judicial action took place around 1918 to 19 in a fiery time of testing which the fearful ones were unable to stand. Only the obedient and loyal spiritual sons of Levi were willing to submit to the refiner's fire and the costly cleansing of the lawman's life. Jehovah approved of these, and thus they became a people who could present to Jehovah a gift offering in righteousness. That gift offering actually took the form of the mightiest public declaration of God's word that has ever occurred on this earth. In order to dispel any misunderstandings as to how this marvelous work was accomplished, we are told in Zechariah 4, verses 6 and 7, that it was not by a military force, nor by human power, but by my spirit, Jehovah of Arches has said. Yes, it is Jehovah's irresistible active force which enabled that original tiny band of warriors to move out in battle against all of Satan's hordes. It is that same spirit also which will fully accomplish all that Jehovah has in mind to do. Nothing his enemies can do will prevent it. Now we have with us a brother of long standing, Brother McKnight of Pittsburgh. Brother McKnight, when were you baptized? 1919. Talk about 1919. 19. What were the conditions in the organization during 1919? Well, there's a change in administration. It wasn't easy. Some wanted to go one way, some wanted to go another. But we had a president that first still uh, going back to the rest of us. Right, and we remember back then that uh, had we had on our part to advance to someone who opposed us, see? And that's why it is that it's necessary for us to keep on the move forward. Now, when we uh, uh, following uh, Brother Russell taking over, there's many new things we have to do. New means of teaching, new ways of teaching and preaching. For example, we might say that uh, when we come to the, to the, uh, uh, the, uh, when it comes to house-to-house -to -house, uh, work, the house-to-house -house witness work, there was many opposers. Some of those uh, who wanted to, some of the elders wanted to, uh, a little bit of the meaning, and uh, as well as just to preach uh, the public talk. So there were many things that I saw, I saw everything that happened between them and now, but there was always enough for the organization to keep us straight, to their healthy father, see? I come in the truth uh, by means of a photograph of creation. I was walking along the street one day and I saw a lamp of paper uh, having to do with the uh, 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 the 
And the only thing I can remember about the fish itself was that it's true to walking out of Egypt. It was marching out of Egypt. And the, 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 the fact went out that there was this uh, music which I might eat it. And that's the wood smoking thing. Now, that's the one thing I actually committed the truth. As I went out to live uh, there, actually, I saw a table there that I hadn't seen uh, when I went in. I went over there and I saw that there were tracks, see? And uh, the attendant uh, said, take as many as you wish. Well, I uh, picked up a few, and suddenly I saw a track that, cha a track that changed my entire life. And the track was, uh, the track was entitled, uh, Hell, who are there and can't be developed? <laughs> so I, uh, I read, read that tract and then I, uh, I was out of town and I called uh, the minister, I uh, wrote a letter to the minister and asked him uh, if he would explain to me uh, the difference between the hell of Jonah and the hell we were taught in the church. Jonah cried out out of the belly of hell cried out. Now he was. Brother uh, McNutt, are you glad you took your stand on the side of the truth? Well, I, I sure am. That's the only one that the only thing that would give me a piece of mind. It is true that 
these were only small beginnings. Jehovah's little army numbered only a few thousand in contrast to the billions of Satan's agents. The situation seems so impossible that the question is raised in Zechariah 4.10, who has despised the day of small things? We certainly do not despise that day. It is Jehovah's day, the day in which he has used that tiny army of witnesses to make his name known all over this earth. Millions more have joined with them, and now they're all worshiping and serving the true God to his glory. Now we also have with brother with, with us Brother Paul from Germany, who will now tell us of his experiences in this connection. Brother Willie Paul. I was born in the city of Hamburg in Germany in March 1919. I began to learn the truth from my parents in my early childhood around 1924. I remember singing our songs, many of which centered around the heavenly host. The various instances of Jehovah cleansing his people are very vivid in my mind. We had to learn to give up certain unclean practices that have been sticking with us. For example, our emblems of cross and crown, our daily manor books with photographs of prominent ones, notations for birthday congratulations, Christmas celebrations, and other things. From 1933 to 1945, the Nazi regime of Adolf Hitler brought increasing persecution upon us in Germany, later on, and our brothers and other of European countries. At first, we were sure that Jehovah was not going to permit the ban on his work for a long time, because the work had been progressing so well. But Jehovah had his own purpose in permitting the fierce persecution to go on for about 12 years. Some have compromised the fear of man, Finally, what a wonderful witness had been built up by God for your witnesses in all the world, never the mountains. It could have not been given in another way. Jehovah proved to be mightier than the mighty, all-powerful Nazi machine that had been set to exterminate Jehovah's name people like vermin, as his expressed it. At the end of World War II, Jehovah's people as a group had to survive. But Hitler and his mighty army had been trampled into the dust. Soon there were 6,000 publishers in West Germany. By the end of 1946, I had a better service. The publishers kept growing. Until this year of 1984, the combined peak of 114, 19 publishers reported for West Berlin and West Germany combined. We raised our voices in gratitude and thanks to Jehovah because he cleansed his people in order for them to offer acceptable sacrifices. Thank you, Brother Paul. <laughs> Cleansing and refining was not all over by 1919. From that time onward, Jehovah's people have undergone continuous adjustments. They have separated from Satan's unclean world. They reject his debasing music, his unclean entertainment, excessive partying, revelries, and overindulgence in drinking and eating. They refuse to use illegal drugs or to be caught up in the unclean tobacco habit. The increasing light from Jehovah's temple has enabled them to make many other physical and spiritual adjustments also. Jehovah has certainly taken out of the world a clean and refined people for his name. You are my witnesses, is the utterance of Jehovah, that you may have faith in me. I am Jehovah, and beside me there is no Savior. May everyone here on this historic occasion be zealous and faithful witnesses of the living God, Jehovah, 